Namaste, beloveds. This is the second portion of um, the video. Let me get the title together. El Shaddai versus Babylon the Great Whore. Um, this portion of the video is going to be me repeating some things that have been that have been shared and came up before whether in whether I shared in videos or my on my blog talk radio or just um, on my Facebook page so um, these are things that spirit is having me share once again because of um, the cycle and the season and the energies um, that are happening right now so I'm just going to start reading, beloveds, because it's it's a lot. So, um, make sure you got your water, or your tea, or whatever you're going to need. Um, and let's get started. Of all ceremonies and rituals, the mind is the master MC, and your life's your life is the music being orchestrated, composed, and conducted by its command, no matter if your frequency is soul, rhythm, and blues, hip-hop, rock and roll, heavy metal, folk, classic, underground, jazz, or any other box or label you come up with. What does pettiness require of you? What emotions, what memories, what reading, what thoughts will it take to interfere with your peace, to shatter it, to steal it, to take it from you? It could be something so small as a vibration. Mastering peace must become a way of life. It is a spiritual fruit that must be deeply rooted inside you. You must recognize it as life-giving from the tree of life that exists inside your human body. And you must choose this fruit rather than the fruit from the tree of knowledge and good and bad. You are what you eat. Grace is strengthened throughout the whole universe by your choice. whatever that word is, you choose to eat from the tree. The minute you choose to eat from the tree of life, the more, I'm sorry, the more you choose to eat from the tree, my handwriting is horrible. It is real chicken scratching for real, okay? So bear with me, beloved. And it's like I said, it's been a while since I've read this. So all of this is coming up for me too, so. Let me start again. Grace is strengthened throughout the whole universe by your choice. The more you choose to eat from the tree of life, the more that grace expands. That is the law of exchange with the trees. This is why they were created first. And that is why the petty always destroys the ecosystem by deforestation by deforestation. Wow. Well, that was, like I said, I wrote this. It's been a while. I, I didn't put the dates down for these, but let me just keep going. Um, and I, I, this is the second video. You should watch the first one because it leads up to this one. This is the addiction to killing without oxygen. God's breath, one cannot exist. Survive this class. One cannot survive this class, this earth class. So with God's breath gone, with the trees, without the exchange of expanding grace, we lose hope. 
and we become less than. So reincarnation and karma exist for a reason, a cycle and a, a cycle, an age, a circle, a spiral, until we die as slaves or we exist as masters. It is a choice. Do not eat from this tree. And I just, in the prior video, spoke of um, the words that came forth. They were just, they were words that came dealing with um, the master and the slave. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Um, Antichrist, Trump, Brooklyn, housing. And Brooklyn is Brooklyn, New York, beloved. And there is something about Brooklyn, New York that is a it has something to do with the spiritual grid of our conscious awareness and evolution at this moment. And there's a lot that's going to be revealed through and from that source. I'm also seeing the Brooklyn Museum. Um, so there's something there that is really has great spiritual energies connected to it that is really... Mm. birthing change and connecting dots and allowing others to connect dots. So um, you can go online and look through that book, Brooklyn Museum and see what's in there. Um, but there's, there, there's energy there now, ancient energy there now that is speaking of the master slave, the Antichrist, Trump, housing, legal actions, boule gatekeepers, those in the black community who are part of secret societies that stay in power through enslaving others' spiritual will, Dr. York, Republicans, money, power, through the exploitation and denigration of generations based on loyal servants, to their masters who live by the words of their master's desires. And the answer was, you cannot serve two masters. And that is why all of this is coming up um, as clarification and as judgment and everything else, as solutions and resolutions and fulfillment of prophecies. Um, in our conscious awareness. So just observe, beloveds. Don't do it from a place of human judgment. Don't do it from a place of spiritual judgment because that's not your place either. Observe it. Observe it from part of the conscious collective that is here to observe, to watch, to watch the expansion of spiritual conscious awareness, okay? Let me go back to this now. So reincarnation and karma exist for a season, a cycle, an age, a circle, a spiral until we die as slaves or we exist as masters. It is a choice. So we die as slaves or we exist as masters, masters of ourselves. So this is what and where conscious awareness is leading us so that we can become masters of ourselves. And I don't know why, but he man. Shira, Masters of the Universe, just came in the power of grace. Go, okay. Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge, was a warning. If you eat from this tree, you will be like God with some petty bullshit. Your desires are 
observable by the mind, no matter how big or how small. The mind is addicted to knowledge. It always wants more. It doesn't care, good or bad, just more, like a junkie. You help your mind recover by feeding it only from the fruits of the spirit. This is the only cure. Wow. Wow. And beloveds, when I, when I read that part about the mind is addicted to knowledge and it always wants more, it doesn't care good or bad, just more like a junkie. I saw someone shooting up heroin and they didn't care whether they got a good batch or dose or not. And if it could kill them, oh, they really wanted to try that. Just give it to them. Just, just give it so they could pop that vein. And again, that, that vein, that's the blood flow, that's the circulation, that's the heart infiltration. So understand what you're addicted to and what that addiction is all about and what it symbolizes. Because when that drug takes you over, it becomes your master and you become its slave. And your, what is enslaved is your conscious awareness of yourself and your ability to observe from a higher, clearer place, more pure place. Love. Love is not complicated. Love is simple, not complicated. Feeling unsafe, the need, addiction to defend. Ground yourself, find peace. Find balance. Find all possible. Find all possibilities. Find all truths. Open yourself to the vastness of existing as unconditional love. And beloved, that simply means that unconditional love is not limited. It is not limited in its scope, in its breadth, in its depth. Um, just the other day, I shared some things about Kuan Yin. And Kuan Yin is the Christ consciousness personified. Okay? And I also did a blog talk radio show where spirit came forth with some some things there. So, um, if you find yourself spiritually hungry, you find yourself spiritually thirsty. These are things for your for your spirit and for your soul. These things are not for your mind, because your mind, like I said, is insatiable. And it doesn't care right or wrong. It just goes back and forth between it like a ping pong ball. Just more, more, more. More, more, more. But the true you is observing with wisdom and discernment. It's all knowing. So there's not enough knowledge to fill you because you're, you're it. And you're at peace because you know that. The mind is never at peace because it doesn't know that. It's always searching, seeking, hungry, thirsty, feeling deprived, feeling picked on, feeling superior, or feeling inferior, whatever gets it off in the moment. You are not your mind. Ground yourself, find peace. Find balance. Find all possibilities. Find all truths. Open yourself to the vastness of existing as unconditional love. To recognize that we are made in the image of God. Existence. Absolute consciousness. So being made in the image of God is absolute consciousness. It's being aware that you have access to absolute consciousness because you are absolute consciousness. 
So why would you hate yourself? Why would you deny yourself? Why would you not love yourself? Why would you choose to not take care of you and everything else because it's a part of you? That's absolute consciousness. We have a ways to get to absolute consciousness, but it starts with being aware consciously and being able to observe our thoughts and realize our thoughts are not us. Being able to observe our feelings and know that our feelings are not us. They come from us, they come through us. We act within them, they influence us, but they are not us. They don't have final form. Same with our body. Our body is this body, this appearance. What you look like in any given moment. Whether you got all these little jujabs on or lipstick or makeup or no wig or no clothes even. None of that is you. What you are cannot be witnessed, observed with eyes physical eyes, because you are conscious awareness. You are existence. You are conscious awareness existence. It is witnessable inside the manifestations. Hmm. Then we have to commit to the existence of unconditional love. Existing within us, all of us, which brings us back to feeling unsafe, existing as existing as the divine frequency of unconditional love, the need to defend it, the need to submit to it, and all the various degrees in between. Those polar opposites defending, submitting, the compromise between war and peace, the ground zero aspect of unconditional love. And that ground zero, that's balance, beloveds. That is the home base, so to speak, of conscious awareness. That is the highest of the high. That is the highest consciousness you can have at that ground zero is to operate from that place because it is everything and nothing at the same time. Nothing being infinite possibilities yet to be manifested. Who are you? What is your greatest power or superpower? We were told it is love. Why? Because love, out of everything else in existence, is not based upon a frequency of condition. Without condition, it is unlimited. It is every essence of possibility. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. That's so freaking deep. Who are you? What is your great power or superpower? We are told it is love. Why? Because love out of everything else, out of everything else in existence, love is not based on a frequency of conditions. Without conditions, it is unlimited. It is every essence of possibility that is so powerful. That requires poetry and song and dance and, and art. That is why and how we can say God, existence, absolute consciousness, is the highest vibration, frequency, truth, power, and principality. 
Being in this conscious awareness, existence allows you to stand naked in your existence without shame and without fear. There is no need to defend. There is no need to submit to what you already are. For the physical vessel forms to realize and recognize it is the dwelling place of the purest spiritual essence. Breath of unconditional love is to understand your highest nature, essence, self, vibration, frequency, form, spectrum, color, sound. And integrating with this power is what aligns you as a master of the universe. Like I said, all of this is connected, beloved. And I see why Spirit is having me um, share all of it because it is it is truly um, it's truly deep and and um, just whew, okay whatever I'll leave it <laughs> okay um, what what. My mind was saying, girl, I feel like you got snot hanging down your nose. Like I said, that's the mind. The mind is something else. That's the distraction. It's like, okay, what's going on? Need a little fidget. Get away from what you're reading. Need a little popcorn popping. Okay? This, understand, this is your mind. This is what it does. Your mind is not you. And the more you get conscious aware of it, the more you catch it, the more you see it, the more you're like, can silence it and get crickets and be at peace. And align as a master of the universe. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Which means your mind can no longer speak to you because it does not know the language of love. It does not recognize itself as a citizen of love, an aspect of love. It does not recognize the image in the mirror looking back at it as itself, but as an other that it fears and must defend itself against. It must compete with it must win over by any means necessary because this image is separate, different, outside, foreign, weird. This image contrasts everything the mind holds to be true. This image, which is love, that has unconditional love, that has taken on the form of your vessel, this human being must suffer and die for its blasphemy against itself. This is war. Stop. Why are you so addicted to the fruits of good and bad? Division, sides that are endless in their immortality, existing as a representative of zero, nothingness. Stop. Do not eat from that tree of limitations, which is the tree of death. When there is the tree of life, of every possibility that is born from love, unconditional love, by the fruits of the Spirit, love offers you choice, but also warns you of the power found inside that choice, will weaken your ability to exist as love, or it will increase your ability to exist as unconditional love. You either choose the highest or lowest frequency to learn who you are, your unconditional love, or you are a limited love form. Again, that is the choice, beloved. And that is the choice found within your conscious awareness expanding itself. And you are to begin observing yourself, and existence itself through that lens. 
Which version of you as love is born, is given the right to be, to exist, to take form, to manifest into a world which supports your powers and principalities as love? Stop the war that is within you, the war of the two worlds, both are love, both exist, but your reality world manifests paradise or hell based on which of these loves is the strongest. Represent your own image back to you, the clearest, highest definition, best frequency. The one that establishes and maintains peace through love or fear. Love does not bow to fear. No matter how fiercely the wind may blow, the mountain does not bow. And that's one of my favorite quotes from Mulan. <laughs> no matter how fiercely the wind may blow, the mountain does not bow. Mulan. The integrated image of love will always be masculine and feminine as one love, blush and giggle. The, inter the integrated image of love. That means you have to unify both aspects of love as one. And again, this is all coming from the perspective of the divine feminine and her revealing herself, her revealing what she needs, her revealing what her story has been and the story that is yet to be born within each of us as individuals and as a conscious collective. Um, this one has a date and time, 11, 15, 2020, 4, 18 PM. Rebuking is a power deconstructing, decoding, taking authority over, binding, expelling the spiritual addiction to self abuse in any and all forms that it may try to take. Wow. That was that one. And this one is... 11, 6, 2020, or 11, 16, 2020, 12, 24 p.m. Fear not those who kill the body but cannot destroy the soul. Your fight is not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. Systematic slaughter of a conscious knowing and identification in order... In other words, alignment with higher consciousness. Thus, your ability to identify and mirror your highest vibration. What is the opposite of that? A narcissist, a sadomasochistic narcissist. So, what is the opposite of Your being consciously aware of your identification and your words being in alignment with your highest consciousness. The opposite of that is a sadomasochistic narcissist identity. And you have to choose. Um, which identity you are more consciously aware of which one you identify with most and which frequency you want to mirror. Um, 11, 26, 2020, ground zero, 11, 26 a.m. The completed revelation of this morning, I woke up with such clarity of intention for this day I have been wanting to do another video for some time now, but I listened to the part of me that said, not now, wait until the right moment. You will know when that is. Today is the right moment, beloved. 
Today is the culmination of many lifetimes, many lessons of victories, defeats, and stalemates. Today is the day where it has been made most clear to me that our fight is not against flesh and blood, but the powers and principalities of conscience influence. That which can be so easily influenced, manipulated, means it, its will is mutable. Its will is able to be silenced. And this can only happen when you do not know who you are. Because you are not grounded deeply by your roots. Your roots are the powers and principalities, which means your growth, your manifested existence can be and will be affected by the storms of outside forces. A tree is very much like a mountain when it is rooted, when it is deeply rooted in the ground. Storms may come and it stands. Fires may come and it still stands, able to regenerate itself. I have observed this in the trees of the Australian fires. The bark is black, yet colors of the phoenix are sprouting out from it. As if the tree is saying, I am that I am. And my spirit rejoices within me as I bear witness to the truth of conscious existence again and again and again and again. Beloveds, today I want to address our understanding of the powers and principalities, which is a will, a conscious will that exists as a polar opposite. It is a destructive force, frequency, vibrant consciousness awareness that we all have. We all indulge and we all feed with doubts, fear, and hopelessness, and lack of identity, thus lack of use of your other will as a creator and not just as a destroyer. Our war is against this conscious will that is formless but takes on form and exists as chaos. As told by the Cherokee, it is the other wolf or will that exists inside of you. It is death. And its will is as strong as life. Yet you, your will, your conscious exists in flesh, which means you are still created from the will of the divine to choose and manifest your existence. And this takes me back to um, the title, El Shaddai versus the great horror of Babylon. Which means you are still created from the will of the divine to choose and manifest your existence, your state, your kingdom, your house, your home. You have divine dominion. You are a sovereign royal ruler. As consciousness itself, know thyself. That goes back to... Um, the fairy tale stories of the true mother, the true parent versus the step parent or the stepmother. And what she wants to do is to take over the inheritance of the child. So once again, we're being led to, let me see, I have a slight issue on my nerves. Here we go. We're being led to, um, The understanding of the divine feminine and her shadow aspects. And I will need this light because I'm going in slow motion. So it is what it is. Um, focus, brown. Okay. Again looking at this from the standpoint of the archetypes of the mother who dies and leaves the child or the mother who the child that is abandoned and comes upon the world itself and this world the 
powers and principalities within it forces wants to reduce it to a slave in order to overcome it, to corrupt it, and to steal its sovereign inheritance. And if that inheritance is nothing more than a divine identity, it wants it. You are not at war with your flesh or anyone else's. You are at war with a conscious state of manifested reality, the power and principalities of chaos, which is a part of you, but not the absolute truth of who you are. Peace is born from the unconditional love of the whole absolute, undivided consciousness of your existence, being. Excuse me. Governed being, ruled, ruled being, maintained being, overseen being, reunited in unconditional love for the creator and the destroyer that you are. One consciousness will, one conscious will incarnated into many forms and many formless constructs and concepts all existing at once past, present, and future, as willed by the individual and the collective forces, which are powers and principalities of creation and destruction, governed by universal laws, which is the highest will of the state of consciousness. It is time to consciously and willfully take upon yourself the responsibility of existence as the master of the powers and principalities of chaos and destruction, of creation to willfully destroy the old system of bondage to chaos, controlling our conscious will or creating, giving birth to a conscious will focused on unconditional love, of the vastness of possibilities that come from a free will. Beloveds, we have journeyed, we have quested, we have traveled, we have recorded, we have written, we have dreamed. Now is the time to be still, to be rooted in the conscious awareness of zero. All and nothing, which is just another way of saying creation and destruction. You exist as that, this one, being, a being amongst other beings. A being is existence, no matter the form or formlessness. Inside this stillness, step back into the vastness, all possibilities and none. From this place, root, ground yourself in the unimaginable depths of unconditional love. Close your physical eyes and open your third eye that is unchangeable and is always rooted in the very heart of conscious will, knowing and being. Breathe. And then from this place of absolute foundations of the unchanging, observe the changing with absolute detachment from the mind, which is the vehicle of chaos, which is also another word for change, which has a multiverse and possibilities of outcome. Detach from everything which can change and focus your attention on what never changes, its will, its wisdom, its individualism, nor its collectivism. Observe and get to know this absolute consciousness that is everything and nothing without change in any multiverse or storm or chaotic situation. And the scripture where it says, be as wise as serpents, and as gentle as doves comes to mind. Know that this is the root of your core. This is the very essence from which you create and destroy all matter with your vital essence of frequency and vibration. 
known simply as unconditional love. Now since the powers and principalities of chaos that surround you realize, and I spell that R-E-A-L dash E-Y-E-S, real eyes, realize the difference inside the conscious awareness of those states of existence. They are both one aspect of divine will, the microcosm and the macrocosm, the highest frequency and the lowest frequency, the sun and the moon, the unchanging and the changing state that in one consciousness, one root with many branches, one will with two forms of expressions, creation and destruction, with one will with two forms of expression, one will, that will has, takes on the form of creation, that will takes on the form of destruction. So that's, again, the life birth, the life, the birth, death, life is the same one. Being non, being, non-being, form, formless, inseparable, except by will, a conscious state of being, knowing, doing. These are the powers and principalities with which we are at war. This is not flesh and blood. It is not racial. It is not based upon gender or economics or what part of the earth you live on or what planet you live on or what species you are or the name you have given to your God or what religion you subscribe and follow. From here, within your own knowing and life experiences and observation, who are you? Are you the stable, unchanging one that is always that is aware of itself as all and nothing? Or are you the chaotic, always changing, yet remain the same one? As absolute will and consciousness governed by the laws of the universe, consciously aware of yourself in the frequency and vibration of I am that I am, which do you choose to reflect and resonate with most? Answer that came forth, zero. Unconditional love does not change to be less than it is. To choose a side would allow division. Subtraction with the need to add and multiply, etc., 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 to infinity and beyond. There exists no moment when you are not both creator and destroyer. Know thyself. At your highest, you are all. At your lowest, you are nothing. No thing. That which does not change is you, our existence. No matter the state of your will, woke, Sleep, dreaming, which means conscious, unconscious, or subconscious. You are still existence, existing. Know thyself and with unconditional love, be at peace with yourself as a spirit being. Root yourself in this conscious way of existing. And I was shown the matrix there. Um go with that information knowing that it is that it too is one of the infinite ways from which to observe existence ground zero alpha and omega of words and ways powers and principalities and now that you have arrived root yourself in this sacred state of grace grace came up a lot um, on Facebook and Minister at Riverside. It's just amazing to me how all of this is tied in and how Spirit um, is leading me back to this. These were coming in days. I remember waking up with these and, and just being so full of it and, and having to give birth to it and, and to create it and, and just having it 
spill from you. And with everything that was going on in my life um, at the time of just how how powerful everything was and how powerful everything is and how so many things within me excuse me for fidgeting below <laughs> how so many things within me have um, changed have matured um, have been let go almost released and, and the, the image that comes forth is a tree in the fall releasing all the leaves as a wind comes through that wind being God's breath just blowing through it and saying release let go of all your shit you know and 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 quit acting like it's not going you're not going to be able to grow and create more and that too will need to be released so this is existence existing and it's like i said it, it's very it's very powerful um and now that you have arrived root yourself in the sake sacred state of grace the sacred state of grace sacred state of grace and the sacred state of grace is the expanding conscious awareness of the truth of, of yourself as it is right and pray speak into existence that peace vibrates high that peace vibrates higher than chaos and that you in your space of conscious awareness okay pray for this pray for it because you are going to be tested and you are going to need to find peace and you are going to need to be able to identify with that spiritual peace with such an intensity and such intent and purpose that it will save many lives. That peace vibrates higher than chaos and that you are always rooted in the balance of maintaining peace and unconditional love between the two as the three of you become that which is one will, consciousness, I, way, being, existence. The witness of codependency. I have been conditioned with the words lazy, stupid, junky, messy, fat. Right now my body is anemic. Um... On my Facebook page, I shared, I believe it's called the pattern of universal pattern of life or something like that. It's a um, spiritual show and they were dealing with the skeleton and I shared it on my um, Facebook page. But in the chat room, because it was a live show, I put in there in the chat room, could they speak on what spiritual anemia was? And here I am with this. And so it's, it's blowing me away, but okay. Right now my body is anemic, very low iron in my blood. And this was a cup a year ago, beloved. Right now my anemia is okay um very low iron in my blood and a very sluggish digestive system prone to i can't read that prone to something 
because of the toxin. My attitude is I have a strong will. It may take me longer, but it will be done. Codependency is an addictive behavior. It is one of the patterns of will to cope and to be. Individually and collectively, we are codependent on each other. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I just zoomed right back into the energy and the speak, spirit and sequence of this part of my life and what I was feeling and what I was dealing with and the coming from the place of an abandoned child and feeling codependency and um, warring within myself against needing others and um, being by myself. So, and the government and everything else. We the people are codependent on the government and the government is codependent on we the people in an unhealthy way. It must be balanced. It must be healed with the same psychological and biological medicine because it is one body acting as many. And that goes, that codependency goes to what I was speaking of, of Trump and Brooklyn and Dr. York and New York and it being the migrating center and the Statue of Liberty and the whole COVID thing that's going on right now, the whole climate change and you have the, the divisions of people saying it's a hoax and it's this and it's that and then you have those that are saying no, it's true and blah, 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 blah. All of this is the codependency and we're supposed to witness it. It's a pernicious cancer fighting itself. Wow. These must, there must be, these must be a witness. Every judge needs witnesses. Perspectives of observation to make the right decisions of action as to what happens and what should happen next and why. This is cooperation which brings balance back to zero which brings healing to all. And I'm shown this with the what's going on in the United States right now with Joe Manchin, um, the Republicans, this last infrastructure bill, um, and the voting rights that are being tampered with, as well as the coup that was initiated and failed, as well as the many treasonous beings who are deadly set against democracy, against the change that democracy is heading towards. And when I say that what it is heading towards is ground zero, a much more balanced democracy because it has been imbalanced. But those powers and principalities want to keep it as it has been, unbalanced, benefiting them only. Again, that's where the gatekeepers and, and, and all of the belay and, and all of this come in. It boggles my mind um, the people that will throw up a, a, a fist and say black power and black lives matter and this and this and that and that and yet they have roots and cords deep within these secret societies who want to keep the slave master system in place, the system of imbalance in place, because they benefit from it. As long as the masters benefit, hey, master scraps is good enough. 
They 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 know which side they bread is buttered on, so to speak. And they got bread and butter. You ain't got none. They don't care as long as they got theirs. So if that means bringing your child into an industry that's going to exploit it sexually, mentally, sell its soul, break its spirit, whatever it needs to do, it's going to be done. In the name of unhealthy codependence on a power and principality that is out of balance, that is out of spiritual alignment with universal laws, and that is now coming into balance. And because it is coming into balance and that cannot be checked, that cannot be stopped because it is It is divine in scope and existence. Observe. You don't have to take sides. Step back and observe. One of the things that's been coming forth a lot lately is um, how will you know? How will you know those of the truth? Christ consciousness? How will you know those of true unconditional love? How how will you know? How can you identify them? And Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruits. You'll know them by what they produce. You'll know them by the unconditional love that they have amongst themselves. That means they don't sell theirs on the auction block. That means they don't steal from theirs. That means they don't con them. They don't run schemes and scams on them. They don't conquer them. They don't colonize them. They don't make them become bond slaves. They don't cause them to be addicted to vices. Means they help and they heal. From a conscious awareness standpoint, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, they serve. This is cooperation, which brings balance back to to zero, which brings healing to all. Expanding, building upon existence. The who am I? One, existence is for foundation. This foundation does not move. It does not change. It exists as everything and nothing at the same time governed by universal laws that keep it balanced. Two, the how am I divine will guided by the wisdom of the unconditional love of grace or the Holy Spirit cultivated and nourished the indwelling and its frequency and vibration will attract to it what what develops around it. So, one, the who am I? Who am I? The answer is you are existence. And knowing that you are existence is the foundation for you to build. And knowing that you are existence and having that as your foundation. Nothing and everything can change around it, but you are still existence existing. And you accept that because it's balanced. You keep it balanced and you keep it balanced because you're governed by universal laws. Two, 
the how am I divine will guided by the wisdom of the unconditional love. The unconditional of love of grace or the Holy Spirit cultivated and nourished the indwelling and its frequency and vibration will attract to it what develops around it. it means, beloveds, universal laws, you're going to attract the lessons you need. You're going to attract the resources you need. You're going to attract the conscious awareness that you need, whether it's through lessons of positivity or negativity or not I don't want to say negativity but suffering you will grow from these things and the way that you learn is going to change just like cycles and seasons but your existence stays the same you are existence and the only thing that is changing is your expanding conscious awareness you're growing you're maturing spiritually which means your fruits will be sweeter will be more abundant uh, again I have down here the, the lesson of anemia boy that that anemia is coming up a lot lately I'm gonna have to look into that because that's that's calling a lot um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit farther into this. Um, this was February 14, 2020, Valentine's Day, unlearning the lesson of needing nothing. I have been committing my thoughts and my desires to peace, which means I have turned my attention to chaos by universal laws of paradox and attraction. As a very young child, I can remember unpleasant situations of various kinds where I wanted and needed to be liked, to be accepted, to be loved, to be needed. And as none of this took the form, I knew deep down inside of me that it should Instead of blaming the world outside of me, I blamed me for needing others to see me, to deem me worthy of loving and needing me the way I deemed them worthy of loving and me needing them. If I go back to my earliest memory of this, I see, sense, smell, and taste my mother. Wow, goes right back to um, the topic, the, the title, beloved, the the two mothers, El Shaddai and the Core of Babylon, the Great. And I feel the discomfort it manifested through my life as never being able to please her, never being good enough, never being pretty enough, not having been born a boy as my father wanted a son first. And I messed that up. So that was another way that I failed my mother, never being smart enough, never looking right in my husky girl clothes that cost more than regular clothes, etc., 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 never amounting to nothing, being nothing and no one to almost everyone I came into contact with, and soaking up the few that saw me that loved me unconditionally. They saw potential in me. They saw something special that encouraged me to keep trying and never give up. To keep getting up no matter how many times you get knocked down. No matter how much of your own blood, sweat, and tears are observed or shed or shared or shown. Do not let nothing stop you. Okay. Message, lesson received. Do not let nothing stop you. How do you do that? How do you do that, Violet? By not letting nothing matter to you was my immature reaction and plan and philosophy. That's the numbness. 
But Valerie, everything matters to us. We feel everything, see everything, hear and smell and taste everything. We interact with everything, seen and unseen, even just with our presence or energy of sensing. Yes, I know. But we have to stop to protect ourselves, our feelings and our thoughts. We have to survive against nothing. So, have to become like nothing. Nothing matters anymore, at least not on top of your core. you becoming nothing and being able to absorb nothing to act like nothing by imitating it. Beating nothing at its own game. That means becoming so numb, so detached to the core of your conscious awareness. From a human being, as a human being, that you peel away certain certain experiences and certain certain lessons because you refuse to engage with them you refuse to endure you refuse to open you bury yeah and that's beating, that was my immature response of beating nothing at its own game. If it don't matter, you can't hurt me. I don't care. Valerie, you have to become better at meeting nothing and no one on this planet. Better than anyone else. And then no one and nothing can ever hurt you again. This way, nothing, which you have just recently identified as chaos, random and fixed, can never punish you. For being you, one who needs to love and be loved in return. So when your mother beats you and is mean to you, you become nothing. You feel nothing. You know nothing. You want nothing from her. You need nothing from her, even though she is your mother. In your nothingness, when she is being nothing, you be everybody and you take care of her and everyone else that you can when you see them become nothing. That is so freaking powerful, beloveds, because that is what the wounded healer does. That is when you, Valerie, who know so deeply what being nothing means, you become wisdom for them. You become a lighthouse. You become an anchor. You become the one holding the rope that is attached around. Their ways. So when they are ready to find their way out of the void, the abyss, the black hole of nothing, which is chaos, the umbilicus will remind them that they can be reborn, resurrected from nothing, back into everything. We as existence itself have free will to, and free, cho free choice of being. One, everything and nothing at the same time, or nothing at all, which is the unlimited potential in motion, formless or everything, unlimited potential in manifested form. So when I was molested, I dove in, into and became a version of nothing, my best version of nothing. Being abused verbally, mentally, and emotionally, and physically, I became yet another version of nothing. Being raped by someone you know and that you trust and a stranger to more versions of nothing. Your father gets Alzheimer's, does not know you, does not know you, dies in a nursing home by himself, many versions of nothing you become. You are 16, you fall hopelessly in love with a 26-year-old 
who just wants to sex you, but tells you he loves you in his own way. You get pregnant, get kicked out of nursing school, quit high school because of it. Your mother tells you she is going to beat the little bastard that you have growing inside of you, out of you, and you have already made up your mind you will kill her and have told her as much. And she tells you to get out of her house. So you go live in a home for pregnant girls run by Catholic nuns. And by this time, you have become so many versions of nothing and nobody, you barely remember how to be you. But when you see others being nothing in front of you, you help them, no matter what your nothingness has become or is up to. I became a nothing magnet in an urban city like Detroit. It is not too hard to do. Every relationship, every friendship, every job, every interaction with another being is about our connection and involvement with nothingness. While every, while everything having and being the biggest war, the biggest whore of roaming in and out of nothingness came when my children moved out and we all, ah, okay, grounding. <laughs> the biggest awareness of nothingness came for me when my children moved out and we all went our separate ways. My daughter and my grandchildren leaving the state. Soon I follow only to have nothing, chaos whoop my ass and spit me out for trying to imitate it and be in its likeness, wanting to be in a romantic relationship so I could love and be loved and thus begin healing. I was told to need nothing and everything would be yours. I tried it in every way I knew how until today, until this moment when I realize I am committed to peace, which means Mr. Nothing, Mr. Chaos has no more traction for me. And I also lay down the burden of having to take care of the nothing chaos energy every time it calls my name. Compassion and unconditional love requires one to make peace with nothing, chaos, and realize each individual must choose their own existence within peace. And having learned this lesson of nothing, I look forward to the lesson of everything, everybody and somebody, somebody who knows they are somebody and somebody who can see the somebody growing, existing as me, and the somebody who is mature enough to guide and share, and I am ready to guide and share the embodiment of existing as somebody. This is not settling for less than you are worth. Whew. Um, I'm going to stop it here, beloved. There's there's lots more, but um, I'm going to stop it here because, like I said, it's it's getting so deep. It's it's just getting so deep. But it everything has brought me back to um, the moment where I need to be at, which is in the journey of nobody into somebody. And that is the journey of um, choosing the El Shaddai aspect of existence versus the Babylon the Great Whore aspect of existence 
both exist. Both exist as existence within existence. But it is it is your garden, your temple. The ingredients, the tools, the foundations. Um, one of my mentors made a post today about um, every decision is based upon what you want. What you want within that moment. You can't blame it on this, that, or the other. You can't blame it on your past, present, or future. You can't blame it on what happened to you, what somebody did to you, what you want somebody to do to you. It's You're doing that action. You're taking that action. You're making that choice. You're being in that moment the way you want to be. And that is the absolute truth. And it is from that absolute truth that expands your conscious awareness, that allows you the discipline not only to observe yourself but to navigate the direction of being the somebody that you wish to be that you wish to create that you wish to be reborn as or that you wish to bring into creation or bring back into remembrance so whether it's a higher form of you that is passed on and you want to bring back. However you go about seeing um, however you go about knowing that frequency, that spectrum within yourself as conscious awareness, it is your seed. What you do with it is up to you. Namaste, beloved. Thank you so much. Um, I am going to do a very short video after this with a couple of cards simply because um, I feel the need to do so. So I will be doing that. Um, thank you for watching. And as always, if you... Um, Think that anything that I've said can help someone, please feel free to share it. Um, at this point, it is what it is. Life, and I'm good with that. So, namaste.